Yeah, you know, I just burned out to the spot. Um, I'm just going to fish a spot that I've fished before plenty of times today because I don't have much time. The sun's already sort of going down. I've only got maybe an hour, 45 minutes of sunlight before the sun goes down. So I just want to spend my time fishing zone, not searching. But even still, I'm going to show you, I still get to, here's my mark here, and I'm just doing a few little loops around. And what I'm looking for is these arches on the bottom and all of this at the top here, this is bait. It's not densely packed bait, but it's bait all the same. And I can see a few arches on the bottom. Here we go, here's some more bait mid-water coming through. So providing there's bait, providing I'm getting bait in the area, that's what I'm looking for. I just want the bait. Well, that's actually not a bad looking ledge there, look at that. That's hollow through there. It's like a cave or something. So, providing there's bait in the area, that's what I'm looking for and I'm happy that I can barely up and if there's bait in the area that the bigger fish will be in the area and they will smell more barely and they'll come and get it done. Today is a bit of a different scenario to usual because the wind is actually blowing on short today, it's blowing from the southwest. So what I'm going to do is spin around because now I've just gone right over the top of the spot that I was going through. So instead of normally I would anchor on top of the reef here on the reef edge here where I am now in 12 meters and let anchor rope out to get me back off the edge. Oh, there's plenty of bait showing around here. Today, I'm gonna to anchor out in the deeper water and then reverse my way back in closer to the ledge. Um, it's not an exact science. I just go out, um, maybe 50 meters past where I think I need to be, drop some anchor rope and then just start letting it, letting it go and just start feeding it back, feeding it back, feeding it back until I can literally watch the bottom start to rise up and I know I'm on the back edge and then I'll pull a bit of anchor rope back in again because I want to be maybe 10 or 15 meters off the back edge of the reef. Um, again, it's not an exact science. And I'm just going to stop here. I'm at 16 meters. You can see I'm a fair way out from the edge there where the edge is. I'm a fair way out from that. So I'm just going to drop a bit of string. As soon as my um, sound comes back from that little reverse action I just gave it there, I'll be able to see my anchor. And I'll know when my anchor's hit the bottom. And then I'll just give it a bit of reverse and back up a little bit. I already know my anchor's on the bottom there anyway. Whoa, how's that swell? There's a good old swell coming through today. I don't know if you can see that. The GoPro always mellows these things out. Good lumpy swell. It's coming up because there's a bit of a storm and a bit of a front coming through the next few days. I don't even know if the weekend's going to be fishable. So it's Monday and I'm fishing because I can. And it's because of what I love to do. So now I'm just reversing slowly, letting out rope as I go. Letting out rope. Probably gonna call it at that, and then just see where, see how um how I swing once the wind grabs and the anchor pulls, and see where I swing. I'm pretty close, as you can see here. I'm pretty close to the edge where I want to be. I've got this zoomed right in, by the way. That's zoomed in pretty far. I'm pretty close to the edge, and I'm sure once the south starts to come into this wind, it will swing me over towards that spot where I am, where I want it to be. But I know I'm pretty close. I'm pretty happy that I'm close enough to where I want to be. There's a bit of bait in the area, that's all I really want. I'll get some barely going and let's get fishing. Just while I'm getting established, I've already got this soft plastic rigged up. Just get that straight out while I'm getting things sorted out. Straight into it early. Barely, I've already got barely in the pot. As stinky as it sounds, I actually left this barely in here from Saturday night because I knew I was going to come out tonight. Um, lucky my neighbours aren't close by to me and I can get away with leaving a stinky barely pot for a couple of days. I wouldn't leave it much longer than two days though because things get a bit ugly otherwise. Get a bit of barely going. And it's time for some beats. Like I said, this is a spot that I've fished before. It's nothing spectacular on the sand or anything like that. It's just 
a spot that holds bait. Every time I come here, or you know, most times I come here, there's some sort of bait in the area. That's all I really care about. This sort of fishing, fishing for snapper, is not so much dependent on the ground. All I want is big structure nearby, which I've got in there, and um, bait. If there's bait in the area, then generally you're in with half a chance. Um, of late, who knows, because I've really sucked at catching snapper of late. Well, there's the phone, that'll be my wife going, where are you? My mum was coming around tonight, and you knew that, and you've run off fishing to avoid me. <laughs> True story. If she loves me, she will understand. So now I'm sucking in a bit of anchor rope because I feel like I'm a bit too close to the reef edge now. So I'm just going to suck a little bit more in. I've got heaps out, so I know I've got space to suck a bit more in if I needed to. I just want to be out a little bit away from the reef edge. I want like 15, 20 metres between me and the edge of the reef. The snapper are going to be swimming along the back of this edge. So I don't want to be sitting right where they're swimming because that will scare them off. But I want to be within a cast of the, of the edge, sort of have that edge behind me out here which I've pretty much got. I'll get a bait out on this one. Um, I was going to switch up this hook and put a different style of hook on. I really can't be bothered. Uh, I'll do it. Since I've already got that plastic out, I'll do it. So I'm snipping this one off. This was the owner the owner Mutu. I'll snip that one off. I'm going to tie on these. These are primal. They're like a BCF brand. I don't don't knock them till you try them. I know everyone goes, Ooh, BCF brand. I'm going to spend fifty dollars on hooks, or else I don't feel adequate myself. Fishing like gear, like I fish. I don't really have any trouble with bending hooks, so I'm going to give them a crack. Uh, oh, that one nearly went in the drink early. So it's a slight, I'll put it on the ground there so you can see. Slightly different pattern. Slightly different pattern to the Ona Mutu, which is the one right here on the right. It's called a Primal Predator, so I'll tie that sucker on and we'll give that a crack. Um, I've got a tiny ball sinker on this side. I don't know what the current's like really, but lately I've just been running it for good luck. I like my baits to sort of waft their way down. I don't like them to just drop to the bottom at 100 miles an hour. So you can see there, that's my little, whoop, maybe. You can see there that's my ball sinker it's pretty small it's just enough to ensure that it sinks it's not going to plummet to the bottom but it is going to sink even if there's a little bit of current that's going to sink which is exactly what i'm after does anybody else tie knots and use their mouth i've always done it can't see it change anytime soon all right so there it is the primal predator. Let's stick this sucker here on. There it is there, and I'll probably just cut the tail off of that too. I only cut the tail off just to make it more of a, it's more like a bite-sized piece for a snapper. He doesn't have to work hard at it. He can just take that into his mouth in one sort of bite. And it's a bite-sized, delightful little morsel. Chuck that out the back. Crank my drag. I don't like it too tight, but I want it tight enough that it's going to set the hook. I'll 
pull this plastic in or retire this for the for now. Kind of got a good feeling about tonight, I don't know why. You gotta be optimistic, right? Put the rest back on ice. Now it's just a case of keeping the burly going. I use these little the little tails that I cut off my muleys. I just dice them into little tiny cubes. Just chuck them over a little bit at a time. Just keep that burly trail constant. I've got enough there's stuff flowing out of there everywhere anyway, like small tidbits. But every now and then I'm just gonna chuck in a big one, just keep a constant trail. Constant trail going. Any fish in the area are gonna smell that and they'll be able to follow it. It's not bunches. It's not a pile of burley, then nothing, then a pile of burley, then nothing. It's a constant trail, which is what you need. They need to be able to follow it. So while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna slowly but surely dice up a few muleys. Just chuck a little bit over the side here and there. My main burley pot's cranking out the burley there anyway, so it's not a huge issue, but because I've got these tails here that I cut off, I'll just use them. Just dice them up slowly while I'm waiting, sort of thing. I don't know what's going on, to be honest, the snapper. This used to be one of my prime snapper spots, and I just haven't seen one here for the last couple of months. The snapper have been really strange this winter. Really strange. I don't know what's going on. Is it a water temperature thing? Yeah, 18.6 degrees, so the water's quite warm here. I was out a little bit uh, a little bit further north from here the other day and it was like in the 15s, 15 degrees, which is really cold. So 18.6 is quite warm, which probably says why all this bait's in the area as well. It's just one of those pockets. The currents run down the back of the reef and they swirl around and they collect in pockets and they travel down the back of the reef. So it always pays to keep your eye on the temperature gauge and find those pockets where it's a little bit warmer than everywhere else because that's generally where the bait will hold up. Find the bait, find the fish with a bit of luck. So I'll show you. I've ended up in 15 metres and I know the reef. I sucked in a little bit of rope before because I know the reef is not that far behind me here. So I sucked in a little bit of rope. Just to give myself a channel between me and the back of the reef. I don't want to be fishing on the reef because that's where you're going to get all your pickers, all your rass and your bits and pieces are going to come through and smash all your baits. I don't want to be too far out that way either because then I'm away from that edge and like I said, I've, well, in my theory anyway, the snappers swim along the back edge of that reef. They use that as like a freeway so they use that sort of as a, I don't know, I guess all the current and the swell pumps up there and, and upwells there which sort of congregates the bait and stuff and I feel like the snapper just travel along the back edge of that reef just feeding so it's basically just a chance of are they going to come along and smell your barely and come and eat a bait or do they not go past you that particular day? Who knows? The mysteries of fishing. Sometimes it's on and sometimes it's just not. So I feel like this bait's got near the bottom now so I'm going to go wind this one in slowly and then I'll hook it back out again. Now I've got my nice little cubes of muley just wafting down there. The next thing to go down will be a bait, just wafting down to follow those cubes down. I fish with my sander on. I don't know if anyone's got any theories. I know some bloke who's adamant about fishing with his sander off. He reckons the noise of the pings scares the snapper away. Um, potentially it does. I always fish with my sander on because I like to see I like to see when there's archers coming through and like get a, get a feel for when there's fish. Sometimes I can see fish coming through and I go, okay, it's going to happen any minute now. And bang, it happens. Well, here's starting to get some archers coming through now. See those ones just off the bottom? Hang on, let me just turn it to echo. Hang on. But know what you're doing, Scotty? Right, so see these ones just off the bottom? They've got a bit of red in them. They're probably more like what we're looking for. Oh, 
hang on and this rod over here is getting some attention as we speak there we go look at that oh, i feel like i might have just dropped that oh i just dropped it all right well that's the start and that's why i like to fish with my sander on because i like to see the fish come through um, I think there's nothing more exciting than seeing some big arches on the sounder and then seeing one of your rods buckle when you know the fish are coming. It's like the anticipation is high. So on this rod here, I'm sticking, that's my 20 pound. I'm sticking with a 20 pound leader and uh, the Gamma Katsu Shiner I'm sticking with on this side. I've just found that's a really good combination for this rod here. It's got a 15 pound main line, 20 pound leader, and just an unweighted Kamikatsu, Gamakatsu Shiner with half a muley on this side. The other side, I've got 20 pound main line and a 30 pound leader. So a little bit heavier, but not too much heavier. But from what I've been finding the last few outings, this lighter leader always seems to get a lot more hits than the heavier one. My boat is a disaster area. I went fishing with Lockie on Saturday night and I didn't clean it because I knew I was going to come out tonight. So I've left it sitting, baking with fish guts and stuff all in the carpet for the last two days. It's probably not going to get clean tonight either because by the time I get home it's going to be freezing and I won't be in the mood for cleaning it. So it'll probably be a tomorrow thing, but I'm pretty sure there's some rain coming through tonight. So I'll park it outside, <laughs> let the rain give it a quick rinse before I get home tomorrow afternoon. Touchy, here we go, go, go. Oh, you're joking. Tell me I just got baited again. I'm gonna leave that for a second, just in case there is some bait and it comes back. The circle hooks are letting me down, people. This is the whole reason, here we go, it's back, it's back. Oh, and it's off again. This is the whole reason I started this experiment with the circle hooks because I was having some bad luck getting hookups with the hooks I was using. So I started experimenting with some different hooks to see what would work and what wouldn't work. And I've come around to a couple of hooks I like. I really like these Gamma Katsu shiners that I'm using on this side here. They've been working really well for me. And the mustard demons were really cool too. One thing with the circle is when they do hook up, they hook in the mouth. But I feel like they can miss a lot of hookups too. If it's a really aggressive hookup, I feel like the circles aren't always ideal. So like I was saying before, if anyone's got any um, ideas on running the sounder or not running the sounder, I'd be interested to know your theories. Also lights, well, how do people feel about lights on their boat? I've always been a let's keep the boat dark and let's not shine lights on the water sort of person. Um, I don't know if it does make a difference or it doesn't. You see all these people with these big blue lights and stuff on the back of the boat. I know it attracts the squid and I know it attracts the bait fish. Does it scare off the big fish? I don't know. If anyone's got any theories on it or experiences, let me know down in the comments because I'm always keen to give everything a go. Um, since I've been running these lights up here, they kind of shine a little bit of light down on the water. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, like I said, but for us to be able to film in the dark, I've got no choice, I've got to run these ones. But I am looking at fitting one down the back here that shines up away from the water, shines back at us, so um, that might work. I don't know, we'll just have to see. It's actually really pleasant out here tonight. There's nothing that gets you through a Monday better. Like, Monday's a shit day, doesn't matter how you weigh it up. Monday is a shit day when you got to go to work, but nothing makes a Monday feel better than to know you're going to go fishing in the afternoon. So it gets you through the day, you rush home and then come out and score yourself an hour of beautiful conditions like this. Can't be all bad. I'm not going to lie, it is a bit of a rush for me in this at winter time like this. I only get like maybe 45 minutes of sunlight. I've got to rush home, get everything sorted. I'm very lucky I can park this boat in a shed and leave everything in it and lock it up so I don't have to unload it every time. That's probably the most time consuming thing for most people. I'm lucky I can just roll it straight in the shed and lock the door and leave it loaded so always got bait in the fridge. 
always make sure I've got fuel. Well, I've got 300 litres here, so I've always got fuel. Got enough to burn out here. This is only, a, I think, a 12 litre run in and back to get here. And... and for me, this is what fishing is all about. I love to fish, and don't get me wrong, I love to catch fish. But I just love being out here. Like I said, it's a Monday afternoon, I finish work. I'm out here, getting some fresh air, watching the sun go down. Where else would you rather be? Like, what are you gonna do? Sit on the couch, have a beer, watch the news? How boring. It takes a bit of effort to get out, but it's worth it and you never, you're always thankful that you came out. Sometimes you really can't be bothered and that's the days I push myself even harder. At least tomorrow at work, I can say I did something with my afternoon. I didn't just go home and crack a beer and sit on the couch. I actually went out and I did something. And with a bit of luck, that something will be catch a nice fish. Touch, 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 let's go. Come on, let's go. I'm going to give it a chance because of the circle. Oh, there's something there, surely. It's not the first time this thing's hit. No, come on. Something definitely giving that a tap. Should I just leave it until the circle hooks up or not? Or is it just something small? Or did I just lose my bait? Whoa, that was a good swell. That one nearly pitched over. Beauty. Come on, load, load, load. I'm actually not gonna pick this up until it actually, until it runs. I'm gonna give it a chance to eat the circle. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, come on, you big, just eat it. I am gonna pick it up, I lied to you all. Yeah, fish on. What is this? Oh, it's off! Ah, you're joking. Oh no! All right, well there's a fail. This is not gonna be one of these nights, is it? Don't let it be one of those nights. If I'm not mistaken, that's two fails to the shiner now as well. That actually felt like a decent fish too, you had a bit of weight to it. Oh, I'm happy, at least I'm getting some runs. That's better than having no runs. Is pretty much what I've been getting of late every time I've been out. Is it on? Yeah, he's on. He's on. Come on. Come on, Scotty. Stay connected this time. Oh, I don't know what this is, but it's got a bit of weight. Oh, come on now. I think I've got to look at it this time, surely. I can't just drop fish all night because that's just a disaster. It feels decent. It's got a bit of weight to it. it hasn't really run though, which is kind of odd. Normally a snapper will run, or a decent one will. I think it's a pinky. I'm not sure how big. Is it? No, it's a little jew fish. Wow, look at him in the sunlight. Isn't he a beautiful fish? And look at that, the primal predator right in the jaw. You know what, he's from shallow water. And he can go back. I reckon he'll swim easy. Boom, he's gone. If you don't know how lucky you are, Jewfish, you are very lucky. Because it's not every day I'll let Jewfish go. I didn't think that was a snapper. I can taste fish now. What's your theories on kissing fish? <laughs> 
comments down below if you like to kiss fish. Because to be fair, that didn't taste great. Not the snapper I came for. Maybe this one is. That's more like it. Oh no, another dropped hook. Oh, the primal. Oh, is this retire time or not? No, I'll stick with it, I'll stick with it. Oh, you can't be serious. That was the fish I was after. That was my pinky. See the difference in the run between that and the jewfish? The jewfish just sort of did nothing and hugged the bottom. That sucker just ran, which is what snapper do. They hit the bait and they run. If you're gonna put fish back like that jewfish, be quick about it. Don't leave him laying around on the deck. Don't do surgery on him with the pliers. If he's taking it right down, it's not worth doing surgery on him. Just keep him. That fish there, you can see the hook was right in the corner of his jaw. He came up fresh as anything from shallow water. I mean, what, 14 meters of water here. I didn't mess around with him. I put him straight back. I didn't stop to take a thousand photos from my Instagram, whatever. Put them back. If you're gonna put them back, give them the best chance at survival. I know everyone wants photos of fish, but sometimes if it's to the detriment of the fish and you have to wait around and he's there half dead while you're trying to get photos for your Instagram, it's kind of counterproductive putting it back after that. I'm happy that guy swam off well and I don't think he's gonna have any troubles at all. Come on, there's something on there this time, surely. Surely there's something on there that's not the bottom. No, it's the bottom. No, it's something in the bottom. Now I've just got it up off the bottom. Oh, this is weird. I've got weight, but no action. Oh no, it's starting to move. What is this? Some kind of bottom species? Some kind of... Oh, what? Little harlequin fish, is it? What? Is he a harlequin or is he a... Wow, they're so similar to the coral trout, that's not funny. What a cool looking fish. He can go back. Go back. All right, check this. Check this out. See that? I'm in no doubt that they are snapper coming through midwater. Absolutely no doubt at all. See them with the red in the out, like proper arches with red in them? They're good solid fish. Exactly what I'm here for. I feel like I might want to just slowly. Oh my God, I can see them. Oh, wow, I just saw them down there. I'm just gonna bring this bait up a little bit, in a bit closer and sort of up off the bottom. Wow, I just saw them, that was unreal. They were in the burley there. You don't see that very often, I can tell you. Maybe they saw my ugly mug and bug it off. Can't say I'd blame them on that one. Let's see if they see this bait that's just wafting around mid-water now. Oh, there's a lot of them on there now. Look at this. Wow. If you see that, the fish are here. Are they gonna eat? That's the hard part. Come on, boys, let's go. One of his wants to eat, sure. Oh my Lord. Look at that. That's a mammoth school. Why are they not eating? Let's eat people. Let's double check this bait. I oh, know I've got bait on here. Oh, it's tangled around my other one. Bad, bad timing. Really bad timing for this. Oh, now I'm in, I'm in. That one just got a hit. I've got to let go, I've got to let that one go. 
I have to tie this one back on. Oh no, I can see them there. Oh my God, I can see the whole school, like right there. Okay, now I'm really nervous. Surely. Yeah, here we go. Had to happen. It had to happen. I think that is probably the first time I've ever seen snapper like swimming like that in the Burley Trail. I've seen individual ones, but I've never seen a whole school like I just saw there. That was absolutely incredible. In a way, I'm kind of glad I didn't just get that other rod back in there. I had to come a hook up because it was tangled around here and I could see this one was going to get hit any minute so I cut my hook off and just pulled the leader through the knot to free this line up so this one was back in action and it's worked in my favour here we go oh wow Sorry, it's a little bit of a camera change here. I know it's a bit awkward, but I made sure I don't get the slack line on the fish. But you people want action, so I've got to film the action. Wow, this is a heavy fish and it's slugging it out deep. I'm sure that was, oh wow. I'm sure that was snapper, but this is really not behaving like a snapper. This is behaving quite a bit like a Samson fish. But I'm sure they were snapper I saw. Almost positive I saw the big blue spots on them and the big... I'm sure they were snapper. Oh, starting to think more and more that this is a Samson fish. Even though I'm positive, that is not what I saw. If this is a snapper, it's a really good one. I still haven't seen colour on him yet. Oh, and if it's a Samson fish, I really don't want to be wasting my time on it. Oh, this is the dilemma when you're fishing on your own. Because this is like prime time right now. I'm more and more starting to think this is a Samson fish. And a decent one at that. All right, I just did what I shouldn't do and I cranked up my drag another half a turn. It's time to at least see color on this. Let's go, come on, let's go. Here he comes. And the whole school's coming up with him. Oh, there's Samson fish. There's a whole big angry school of them there. Are they? Oh, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, they're Sambos. Look at them all, can you see those? I don't know if you can see those. Oh, 
Wow. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Some fish. Well, well, that's not what I came here for. That is actually disappointing. I mean, I'm happy I got a run, that was good, but not the fish I came for. They still swim off easily. I'll get a few more cubes out there. Wow, I was almost certain that they were snapper eh? I saw like a whole school of them down there. That explains why. I've never seen snapper schooling like that. I know it does happen, but that explains why. They were probably sambos, but they looked really blue and really light in colour. Samson fish normally look really brown. Are they still there? That was epic. Eat it, eat it. Yeah, it ate it. All right. <laughs> Scotty's just playing with silly buggers. Playing silly buggers with the phone. What do we got here? Is this another Samson fish? Uh, this one doesn't feel quite as powerful as the last one. Oh no, he's making a lie on me now. Yeah, this is another one. I don't know. It's got the big head shakes. Until it does like its third or fourth run. I'm not gonna say it's a Samson fish because it could still potentially be a pinky. In fact, it's starting to look more and more like it might be one. Oh, is this the boy we came for? I think it is. All right, hang on a minute. Oh, I've just undone him real fast because I had my drag set. I had my drag set at Samson pressure. You. All right, here we go. Change that around. Let's go here. Here we go. Here's the boy we came for. Pinkies. I knew I could do it. It's just putting in the time, making sure you get your positioning right. Where's that hook? Oh, he swallowed it right in. Oh no, here it is. It's right in the corner. Look at that. It's right in the corner where it should be. So that was just positioning, positioning, positioning. Always get your positioning right. If you don't get it right the first time, so do it again. If you're not in the right spot, you're not gonna catch. Positioning, 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 and burly. Get that burly going. I'm keeping this guy. One other thing too, it'd be remiss of me to not mention it. Um, conditions. It is absolute low tide now, which is not really ideal for fishing, but here's a disclaimer. The swell is building. It's quite a big swell, so that's messing things up. And there is the front coming through tonight. Um, later on tonight, about eight o'clock actually, not too far from where I am now, there's another front coming through and the next few days is gonna be terrible. So that front is gonna drop the barometer and the fish are gonna be on the chew. Um, if you can get these little windows before the front comes through, quite often you'll get beautiful still conditions like this. Um, you will have a bit of swell to have to deal with because the swell generally builds before the wind does. But you get these conditions with the front on its way in and quite regularly the fish are absolutely on. As you can see tonight, they're on. And I know people are going to go, why did you put a jewfish back and keep a snapper? I've still got jewfish in my fridge from the other week, so I'm not short on jewfish. Um, I think I've got another two fillets left in my fridge from the other week, so I'm happy with my jewfish. Um, this snapper, 
I'll eat probably tomorrow night um, with the family. So I don't need dew fish. I thought I'd get some snapper just for something different because we like to mix it up and I need something a bit different here and there. That's why I put the little dew fish back, as tasty as he would have been. If it was the weekend, it probably wouldn't have been his day because I probably would have baked him whole. He's a perfect size. Um, I am going to bake a whole dew fish in my pizza oven at home, which I'll um, film for you guys as well when I do that one day. I've got another couple of weeks left of demersal fishing before it closes off, so hopefully I can get it done before then. This is another snapper, not a very big one. I was just doing a final clean up before I go. Oh, this is only really small. Final clean up before I go. And this guy's come along. Look at him, beautiful with a little. Don't spike me. Come on, we can both be friends here. He's got that little Mutu and he's right in the corner of his mouth. Boom. See you later, buddy. And I'm not even going to put this back out again now. Rightio, I'm out of here. I've had my fun. I've got the fish I came for. I'm happy with that. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this um, video. I'm no expert. I, as I say plenty of times, I don't claim to be an expert. I just run you guys through what I do and sort of work through things in my head as I do it. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I learn something new every time. Here comes the old river anchor. Honestly, this river anchor. Look at that, the boomer anchor. Awesome piece of kit. Just get one. If you fish on anchor a lot around reef, get the boomer, it's awesome. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't claim to be an expert. I just work through things in my head and pretty much share it to camera, talking to myself like I'd be talking to myself if I wasn't filming. So um, excuse me if I waffle on a bit of shit, but um, that's just the way it is. So. Thanks everyone for watching. See you guys all in the next episode. Cheerio, chaps.